Saturday, what, what advice can you give him? I know you sparred Riley yourself from back at home. You watch Deontay Nix. You gotta say it like that, dog. You gotta say it like that. Oscar, you said you hope Keith Thurman is not the next Golovkin, so I have to ask you, who do you think is better out of the two? Thurman or Golovkin? Thurman. Okay. It's better? Yeah, Thurman. Yeah, okay. Oh, absolutely. Thurman. Thurman is... See, one thing about Golovkin, he's tough. He's a strong fighter. Um, when Canelo was sparring with him up in Big Bear, um, yeah, Canelo mentioned, look, he's, he's, he's strong. He's very strong. It's, you know... A lot of fighters are strong, um, you know, and, and there's ways of beating strong fighters. Um, but uh, one thing about Keith Thurman is that he, he knows how to move. He lateral, uses combinations, he thinks in the ring. He's like, Golovkin is, is, is a fighter who, uh, who, who has to beat you with his power. He has to. He can beat you with with moving side to side or, or going back. See, one thing about Golovkin is that that I learned because I've studied him is that if he moves back, he can't, he can't fight. He can't fight. He can't. And Golovkin wasn't at his best. This was not a sharp effort in it, particular by it, it was a lot of arm. It was a lot of arm punches by Triple G. It was a lot of sucking air in. And I didn't see the snap on his punches. I seen him following more than cutting the ring off and actually throwing punches, you know, with, with meaning to it to the body and to the head. Tonight was a night I think he was vulnerable than any fight that ever watched him. I thought he was vulnerable too, particularly if Brooke could have been more precise with his counter punches. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on guys? You know, I told you guys a while ago that the walls were closing in on fighters like Gennady Golovkin and Canelo Alvarez. And eventually, it's not just going to be fans in the comment section that are criticizing Golovkin and asking him to step up in competition. Eventually, even some of Golovkin's biggest supporters, even they're going to start criticizing him. And even professional boxers that have no business with Gennady Golovkin. What that means is, they're not in Golovkin's division. I said this in my Broner video. It's very rare to hear professional boxers that's not even close to a fighter's division talking about a certain fighter or criticizing a certain fighter. You don't hear it too often. Now, you'll hear boxers occasionally if they're asked a the question, what do you think about Floyd Mayweather? What do you think about this guy, that guy? And they'll tell you what they think about that guy or they'll tell you, what they think about an upcoming fight that involves that guy. But you normally don't hear boxers just criticize one of the biggest names in the sport. When you see something like this, that means there is definitely some truth to it. I mean, you guys really have to ask yourself this question and think about this for a second. There are a lot, and I mean a lot of professional boxers and trainers that are criticizing Gennady Golovkin for one reason or the other. They're either criticizing his vulnerabilities in the ring or they're criticizing his level of opposition. I mean, you have tons of fighters, all the way from Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. to Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones, Gabe Rosado, David Hay, Carl Froch, Adrian Broner, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. These are just names that I'm coming up with off the top of the dome. So the question is, why aren't these same boxers, these same boxing fans that agree with these boxers, why aren't they saying the same things about fighters like Lomachenko, Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, Floyd Mayweather, Andre Ward, and the list just goes on and on and on. Why are all of these professional boxers that do this for a living saying the exact same things about one fighter? Is it just because they don't like his smile? Is it because they think he's too nice when he does interviews? Of course not. 
if they are all saying the same things, that means it must be true, right? There is no other conclusion that you can draw when you think about it. So anyway, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into what Gabe Rosado had to say to um, Fight Hype. This is what he said about Gennady Golovkin's performance. Quote, it flat out the way I expected it to. Triple G shows signs of weakness in that fight. If you fight him on the inside, you can get an advantage on him. He showed a lack of defense. If he fought a bigger, stronger guy, he could have some issues. Obviously, we see now why he avoided Ward. End quote. Now, let's break down what Gabe Rosado just said right now. The first thing that stood out is he said, if you fight him on the inside, you can get an advantage. Haven't I been telling you guys for the longest, the way you beat Gennady Golovkin is to fight him on the inside? That doesn't mean you have to stay there on the inside, but you have to go on the inside to get his respect. And then you could go, you could get back to moving around the ring and using great ring generalship. But every now and then, you have to go on the inside and get his respect. This is what Kell Brook did. That's what Willie Monroe, who only had like six knockouts, so he really had no power. That is what he did. And those were the first signs that we had ever seen of Gennady Golovkin looking slightly exposed, where he just looked a little vulnerable. He didn't look as vulnerable as he looked in this Kell Brook fight, but those were just small signs of it in the Willie Monroe fight. Now, what makes this even more ironic and much more of a coincidence is Oscar De La Hoya pretty much said the same thing that you guys just heard Gabe Rosado say. And the same thing that you guys have heard me say for quite some time. You guys just seen the clip that I played at the beginning of this video with Oscar De La Hoya. Golovkin is not comfortable fighting on the inside. And he's not comfortable being backed up. I talked about this a lot in my post-fight video, the Kell Brook post-fight video. Mm -hmm. I said that with Gennady Golovkin, when a fighter with athleticism and speed attacks him, Gennady Golovkin... All he does is he just stands there and he blocks and he waits for you to stop punching. In other words, Gennady Golovkin, he cannot transition from defense to offense the way Mike Tyson was able to do. You could throw a three punch combination at Mike Tyson and Mike Tyson, he will bob and weave and in the middle of you throwing that combination, Mike Tyson could catch you with a vicious hook uppercut, right hand, whatever it is. This is not what Golovkin does. If you throw a six, if you throw a five, six punch combination at Golovkin, Golovkin will just stand there and he will block. He will even eat some of those shots, not on purpose, but he'll get caught with some of them shots, wait till the coast is clear, and then he'll go back on the attack. Now, when it's Lesser opposition, though, like if Golovkin is in the ring with a Daniel Gill, an Adama, a Rubio, someone like that, he will just walk through the punches. But when it's more of an athletic opponent like uh, Willie Monroe or Kell Brook, this is usually how Gennady Golovkin will respond. Now, if you guys are saying, what's wrong with that, Dante? The problem with doing that is... The better competition you face, the more difficult it is to come back and catch them when you think it's your turn to punch. What if you get a guy who jumps on you like Kell Brook did, right? And then once you come back and try to attack him, he's nowhere to be found. Maybe he has a great defense. Maybe he's smothering your punches or whatever the case may be. This is the problem that Gennady Golovkin is going to have when he faces a natural middleweight or a natural super middleweight with the type of athleticism and the natural size that Kell Brook didn't have, but the natural athleticism that Kell Brook did have. You see what I'm saying here? So once again, I know some of you fans, you don't like to hear the truth when it comes to Gennady Golovkin and his vulnerabilities, but these are things you guys should want to hear. You guys should want to hear this. So you could possibly 
help him improve these things. Reach out to Golovkin, you know what I mean, or something. These are things you want to know. You don't want people just telling you what you want to hear. You don't want people just telling you, oh, it was a great performance. You're supposed to get hit like that. You know, that was something else that I've heard some of you fans say in my comment section. Some of you fans will say stuff like, hey, Dante, well, the guy was in there with a smaller guy that had speed and he was athletic. You're supposed to get hit like that. And Golovkin has an aggressive style, so it's only normal that he's going to get hit like that. No, that is completely false. Because when Mike Tyson... No matter who Mike Tyson ever faced, Mike Tyson, guys, he had a very underrated defense, okay? Mike Tyson, his defense was five times better than Muhammad Ali's defense. When Mike Tyson came forward, you couldn't hit Mike Tyson. He, he would duck, he would bob and weave, and he would slip all of your punches, and then he would catch you in the middle of you throwing your punches, Okay, so you can't sit over here and say, well, that's what Golovkin, he's supposed to get hit like that because he's trying to attack this guy. He has to put himself in harm's way, so of course he's going to get hit. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. I can name tons of aggressive fighters that did not get hit the way Kell Brook got hit or the way Gennady Golovkin, excuse me, got hit in this fight this past weekend. I mean, if that logic made sense that Golovkin was supposed to look this vulnerable mm -hmm. against Kell Brook, then we would hear a lot of professional boxers and trainers saying the exact same things. But we're not hearing them say this. We're hearing the majority of them say the same things you guys are hearing me say, which is Golovkin, he looked extremely vulnerable in this fight. Not only are the professional boxers saying it, but the Grand Wizard of the decafs Jim Lapley even said it. He said he looked very vulnerable in this fight. And if Kell Brook was more accurate with his punches, Golovkin would have been in a lot more trouble. Just imagine what he just said. Just think about what he just said right there. What he, basically what he just said was, if that was a middleweight that was as good as Kell Brook, Golovkin would have been in a lot more trouble. That's pretty much what he just said. So... We'll see, guys. Once again, you know, this was a gift and a curse for Gennady Golovkin because now more people will definitely come out and will be interested in facing Golovkin now. The WBA is ordering Danny Jacobs to fight against Golovkin next because Danny Jacobs is the regular WBA champion. So that's perfect timing because right when Danny Jacobs is like, I'm ready. I'm ready to fight Gennady Golovkin next. That's when the WBA orders this fight. So this is good, guys. This is good for Gennady Golovkin. This is good for Danny Jacobs and all the fighters that want to fight him next. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I truly believe when it comes to Danny Jacobs, out of all of the middleweights, I believe Danny Jacobs, he has the best chance to beat Gennady Golovkin. But at the same time, for those of you fans who don't know, Danny Jacobs is not undefeated. He has a loss. Not only does he have a loss, but he has a knockout loss. So that kind of puts him almost in the category with Curtis Stevens. Curtis Stevens, he looked good going into that fight. But the truth was, Curtis Stevens had already been knocked out before. Matter of fact, Curtis Stevens going into the Golovkin fight, he had a couple of losses. Now, I'm not trying to compare Stevens to Danny Jacobs when it comes to style. I'm just saying what they have in common is they both came into the fight with losses and knockout losses. So we'll see, man. It really comes down to how Danny Jacobs' chin holds up. But yet at the same time, you could look at it two ways. You could say, well, Danny Jacobs, he's been battle tested. He knows how it feels to be knocked out. He knows how it feels to be knocked down. We really don't know how Gennady Golovkin is going to respond when he gets knocked down when he has a cut over his eye and the walls are closing in and the guy that he's fighting, he won't take no for an answer, right? Like Terrence Crawford said about Gennady Golovkin, we need to see how he does against an opponent that fights back. How does Gennady Golovkin deal with resistance? And we've seen a little bit of resistance from 
Kell Brook, but the problem was Kell Brook was a welterweight. So he didn't have the type of power to keep Golovkin off of him. I think a Danny Jacobs, that is a step in the right direction for Gennady Golovkin. If Gennady Golovkin goes in there and annihilates a Danny Jacobs, then I believe we can start calling Gennady Golovkin pound for pound top five, one of the best fighters in the world. I truly believe that. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see um, if he's going to fight him or, or Billy Joe Saunders next. Personally, I prefer the Danny Jacobs fight. Uh, you still have Canelo Alvarez out there. I wouldn't be surprised if Canelo pops up out of nowhere and he says, I want Golovkin next. It's a good possibility. So that's pretty much all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. This is Bobby, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation.